Hi, welcome back to the Personal Training and Kinesiology playlist. I'm Kevin Tokoff, and make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thanks so much for that. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about the resting heart rate test for calculation of VO2 max. So that's ultimately what this is. This is we're going to look at one way, probably one of the more common ways, to estimate the VO2 max of a person. So what is what is VO2 max itself? Okay. VO2 max is ultimately the maximum oxygen uh, consuming capacity of all the cells of your body. Okay, so in other words, the higher the VO2 max is, the more oxygen molecules that your, your cells overall are able to consume per unit time. Okay, um, remember that for aerobic respiration, which is something you probably learned about in a biology course or in your kinese courses, Aerobic respiration, um, ultimately at the very end of the entire pathway, it requires oxygen. So if you're doing aerobic respiration, you're using oxygen. If you're measuring VO2 max, and therefore VO2 max is really a, a measure of the cardiovascular or cardiorespiratory health of the person. So you really want your VO2 max to be high. Okay. Now there are several factors that affect VO2 max. Um, some of them ultimately are going to be ultimately the weight of the person. So it turns out that heavier people are actually going to um, have to use more oxygen because heavier people have more cells. Um, another factor is the resting heart rate, RHR of the person. Okay, resting heart rate affects it. And then also the age affects it as well. So it, the trend is, in general, as the person gets older and older, the VO2 max falls with the age. It falls as the age increases. Okay, so... There's two things that we, in general, have to do here, is we have to calculate the maximum heart rate, and that itself, this formula that we're going to use is more or less an estimation, thus this little squiggly equal sign. We're going to estimate the maximum heart rate with a formula over here, and then we're going to actually determine the resting heart rate, which is something you can do, um, you can actually do, you can measure somebody's um, you can measure the number of times their heart beats per minute, or you can measure the number of times their heart beats per 15 seconds and then multiply that by four, okay, depending on what, what you have the time for, okay? So we're going to do each of these calculations, and then we're going to calculate the VO2 max, okay? The first one is our estimation. We want to estimate the maximum heart rate. The way you do that, um, there's actually a simpler way you can do that that some, some places will use, and it may be beneficial to use it on the, an exam for the sake of time. You actually take 220 and you subtract the person's age. Now you can see this formula is a little bit more complicated as you would expect. It's therefore a little bit more accurate when it comes to fitting the data that's collected. So you can take 220 minus the age or use this formula. I'm going to choose to use this one just to expose you to it. What it is is you take 208 and you subtract the product of 7 tenths and the person's age. So let's go ahead and do that with this example down here. Okay, so remember what I'm doing. I'm taking 208, so the maximum, the maximum heart rate is going to be approximately, it's an approximation, 208 minus 7 tenths, or 0.7, of the person's age. In this case, that's 30 years. Okay, so again, we can do some cancellations here. 10 cancels with 30 to give 3, and so this ultimately becomes 208 minus 7 times 3, which is 21, okay? So in other words, the maximum heart rate in units of beats per minute is going to be, let's see, 8 minus 1 is 7, and then 20 minus 2 is 18. So this is 187 beats per minute. That's the maximum heart rate of the person. Now, that's something you, in general, have to calculate, because if you actually wanted to accurately measure the maximum heart rate, you would have to put this person on a treadmill and do a very, it's one way to do it, do a very, very strenuous exam, a, a test on this person. And that's not something you want to do when you're trying to first, you know, get a, a you want to get somebody's maximum heart rate when you're first, you know, you're first uh, exposing them to you as your client. Um, that's going to scare people away and most people aren't going to want to do a strenuous, um, you know, treadmill exam at me till maximum um, exhaustion. Okay, basically, you don't want to do that, so you just want to estimate it. Resting heart rate, though, you can do that. You're going to have the person sit down um, or lay down if you have a place for them to do that. And all you're going to do there is, you know, let them rest for just a minute, and then you're just going to measure the number of heartbeats they have in one minute. 
and that's the resting heart rate. So the resting heart rate here was given as 60 beats per minute. Okay, I'll just write that again here. Resting heart rate is going to be 60 beats per minute. Okay, now the thing we do to calculate the VO2 max, and notice the VO2 max is in milliliters of oxygen per minute, and then this should actually be per kilogram, so that should have a negative one there, per kilogram. Okay, so we're actually going to calculate the person's VO2 max in units of that. So what we do to do, estimate that is we take the maximum heart rate, divide it by the resting heart rate, and then multiply that times 15.3. Some sources will actually just round this to 15.0 or 15, but to be more accurate to fit the data that's been collected, we're actually going to use 15.3. All right, so let's go ahead and let's estimate the VO2 max, okay? The VO2 max is going to be, I'm going to, I'm just going to pull the 15.3, go ahead and write that. Then we're going to take the maximum heart rate, that's 187 beats per minute. Resting heart rate, notice, was 60 beats per minute. And then, of course, we just multiply that times 15.3. Okay, so 187 divided by 60. Let's go ahead and use the online calc or the calculator I have on the computer. There we go. So let's go ahead and clear this. We said the maximum heart rate was 187 beats per minute. We're going to divide that by our resting heart rate, which was 60 beats per minute. It gives us some, some number. Then we're actually going to multiply that times 15.3. And that's going to give us, we'll just round that ultimately to, let's we'll round it to basically 48. Um, in general, you probably want to use 47.7 or something like that. I'm just going to round this to 48, okay? So that's going to be 48. All right. So that means VO2 max is going to be about 48, and the units were milliliters of oxygen per minute per kilogram. Okay, so this is your ultimately relative VO2 max. The relative VO2 max is independent of the mass of the person. Okay, so in other words, what this is saying is if you had a 100 kilogram person, they would have a smaller absolute VO2 max than someone who's 200 kilograms or something like that. All right, so this is ultimately, this is our VO2 max, and specifically, it is a relative VO2 max, okay? Meaning it doesn't actually take into account the mass of the person. That's why we still see the kilograms as units here in the units of relative VO2 max. But a lot of times what you want to do is you actually want to go ahead and calculate the absolute VO2 max. And for that, you need to actually find the mass of the person. Now, this is the weight of the person. You won't actually use that. But one of the things you can do is to find the mass of the person. You basically take 220, the number of pounds, and just divide by 2.2 pounds per kilogram, and this just so happens to be 100 kilograms. So if I actually wanted to find the, and I'll do this in blue, if I wanted to find the absolute VO2 max, by the way, this is not just VO2, this is VO2 max. If I wanted to find the absolute VO2 max, then I'm basically going to take that 48 milliliters of oxygen per minute per kilogram, and I'm going to multiply that times 100 kilograms. Notice the kilograms cancel, and that ultimately means now I'm going to have 4,800 4, milliliters of oxygen per minute. And this is the absolute VO2 max of the person. Okay, so this ultimately shows you how you calculate the VO2 max of the person. In other words, what this is saying is a 220 pound person is going to be able to consume 4,800 milliliters of oxygen every minute. Okay, now remember that because this maximum heart rate calculation was an estimation, then that means ultimately this determination of absolute and relative VO2 maxes. Those are also estimations, okay? There are ways to more accurately measure the maximum heart rate, but again, those are measurements. You'd actually have to perform some kind of cardiorespiratory test, and if you think about where you're going to get your maximum heart rate, well, that's going to be a very strenuous exercise, and most people don't want to do that, so that's why you do the estimation.
Okay, so hopefully this video made sense in terms of how to calculate the um, expected VO2 max for a person using the resting heart rate test. Um, in other videos, we'll look at other methods by which you can calculate the VO2 max of a person. Um, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for future videos. Thanks very much. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.